with Wrath finally coming to an end after, uh, you know, 30 weeks of ICC uh, and Cata just on the horizon, I figured I'd make a little bit of a, a spec picking guide for Cataclysm. Uh, Cataclysm is like a really, really excellent healing expansion. They make a lot of overall changes to how healing works that I think uh, kind of bridge the gap between the classic play style of vanilla where like you're really just managing your mana pool and your uh, target selection and then the wrath style that's like kind of spikier and spammier but with the healers having more tools health bars move slower and damage is less spiky but you also have like that depth to the play style of each healer and those those changes i think worked out really well and i think kata is sort of like peak healing expansion and all the healing specs are are, are pretty cool and pretty fun uh so I, I i figured i'd just rate them here uh doing a little bit of a meme a meme tier list i'm not going to do like an overall tier list i'm going to break it up because i think that it's more useful to think about the healer's strengths and weaknesses uh, categorically rather than just, you know, giving them a, a, a letter grade. So let's start with raid healing. Uh, raid healing, there's really two different types of raid healing in Cataclysm. There's like, or even in WoW in general, you really have like spread raid healing and stacked raid healing. We're going to start with stacked raid healing. Um, Resto Shaman is S tier in stacked raid healing. It gets healing rain, which is like that little blue circle on the ground. I think it's still in retail. In Cataclysm, that healing rain is just, like, totally insane. When the whole raid is stacked up, like, pixel stacked, um, this is going to absolutely blast. Uh, Resto Shaman is going to feel, like, godlike in that scenario. Also, you know, your chain heals are going to be effective on with all their bounces, uh, you know, like, not getting out of range or whatever. Um, so Resto Shaman is, like, is S tier. It's either the one or two spot for that kind of stacked raid healing. Holy Priest is like an A. It has really strong throughput. It's a bit of a black sheep in Wrath, similar to, or Kata rather, similar to Wrath. It has a little bit of the, like, little brother syndrome with dis discipline in Kata, similar to Wrath, just because, like, if, if a class has two specs that can do the same role, like, you're kind of just going to pick the better one, and people uh, view Disc as being overall better. Although I think Holy will really surprise people. It is, it is really good spread raid healing. Your, your prayer of healing and your renew have like a decent range, right? They don't require people to be stacked. But um, when you are stacked, it's it's still good. Like it's not it's not going to be like the Resto Shaman, but it's it's not like it's uh, really going to be slouching at all. For Resto, Resto is also going to be a tier for stacked raid healing. You have Efflorescence, but Effl Efflorescence is among the weaker of those sort of stacked up heals uh, along with holy priest sanctuary which is like really only effective if it hits like an insane number of targets and they don't move at all so resto druid is probably a bit better than holy priest in this aspect discipline is around holy priest level in terms of this your your prayer of healing is going to apply like an absorb shield 100 percent of the time with divine aegis which is really nice you know these are about equal and Holy uh, Holy Paladin is going to be, um, this might be a bit surprising to people, but in terms of stack raid healing, Holy Paladin is probably, it's it's like competing with Resto Shaman there. They get a spell called uh, Holy Radiance, which um, has like a 10 yard radius and just heals for an insane amount if it hits uh, enough targets. And this, this originally, until the last patch of Cataclysm had a CD on, I think it was 30 seconds, um, and it, it's because it was so strong, but they removed that in the last patch, and we're getting last patch. So if that goes through with no CD, Holy Paladin is going to be insanely strong at stack rate healing. It also generates a Holy Power, so you can, you know, cast three Radiances and Wog or uh, use your Sprinkler. Um, so that's like stack rate healing. For spread rate healing, um, Resto Shaman goes down significantly. Like, depend if you're, if you're so spread out that your uh, Chain Heals aren't going to be bouncing, it's like D... But you're always going to have chain heals bouncing like in melee and range. You know, you might get a couple of, of bounces timing out, but usually you're going to get a decent number. Resto Shaman, or Holy Paladin rather, is going to be like, they're going to be better than Resto Shaman. But they, th their strength here is like going to be the fact that they can triage like single target heal low members while also passively healing the tank, although their beacon is nerfed to 50% now. So they're not going to be like the the total kings of that anymore. Um, so their spread raid healing is like a little bit worse than the other specs. Um, I think Resto Shaman's like S tier. Uh, it, it's it does like really insane throughput if you are on those like rot fights where the raids spread out and all your like rejuves and wild growths are going to be being effective. And if you play it correctly with your tree of life and 
you you can really do like pretty insane numbers i think um disc and holy priest are, are kind of both s uh, although like if you just look at throughput i think holy might even be outperforming discipline um but i think like these are the these are the healers that are going to be although i think resto droids probably just going to be topping meters on those like spread uh, raid raid healing fights although you know like good skilled players can move these around a little bit you know and holy paladin might even be a like the differences between these tiers are not that huge in terms of of spread raid healing specifically so that's spread raid healing let's look at um tank healing so for tank healing i think discipline is actually like very strong at tank healing um oddly enough uh your um divine aegis get, puts absorbs on the tank you have your palm which you're going to be sending into the tank you also get a like a glyph on palm that gives the first tick uh like i think it has a 60 percent boost so like your palm that you're going to send into the tank that first tick is always going to heal for like a huge amount your like single target heals are a lot better like your greater heal and your flash heal and your heal are like actually useful now whereas in wrath like you just always would press power word shield although you do have that power word shield it's like an emergency on the tank and your penance your grace is buffed grace is now 24 percent healing on the target instead of like nine or whatever it was which is really nice so you in, in your tank healing is like decently passive as well like you're you'll be raid healing and you can just send your palm and your penance and uh and you're gonna be like doing a really good amount of tank healing i think holy paladin is still uh the, the top of this just beacon is so strong there's a reason why they had to nerf it to 50 percent in cataclysm it's just like kind of an insane ability uh you're probably gonna have two holy paladins in a 25 man that's so this is, they're gonna do like a lot of the tank healing just passively resto shaman is like it's a right you have earth shield which is really nice it's also a really good applier of the like 10 percent dr uh buff which can only be applied by priests discipline also is good at applying that right because you have so many different damage or healing instances that can crit right penance it gives you three instances so your chance to apply inspiration is really high or shield can apply it passively like even when you're out of range and your riptide is also very buffed in uh, cataclysm so it's like worth casting now druid is also like has decent passive tank healing with life bloom stacking now um you have like your these two talents which are really nice you have empowered or uh, malfurion's gift which makes your life bloom plock, uh, proc omen of clarity with its ticks and then you have empowered touch which makes your single target heals refresh life bloom so you put three stacks on the tank and then whenever you get like a clear casting proc, you can re you can like flash shield the tank and get those life blooms to keep stacking, so you don't have to spend like mana or globals. That's really nice. Also, like your again your direct heals, like all the other specs that didn't ever cast their direct heals before, your direct heals like nourish and regrowth like get a lot better. Uh, Holy priest is like kind of a B, I imagine. You, the the problem with holy priest is that its single target healing is based around chakras. Problem is like swapping this around is costly because you have to press this chakra and then you have to cast a heal and the heal that you cast to activate this specific chakra you want to go in doesn't benefit itself from that chakra so swapping these costs you like a whole cast not being benefited by a chakra so you're pretty much always just going to be sitting inside of the aoe uh like prayer of healing chakra it means that your like single target heals are just not going to be that effective um so but even even then it, it is a bit weaker than the others i think although the difference again and the difference between like these three or these four even really is like not that big even though they're in different tiers next we're going to do mana so um mana is interesting in cataclysm it becomes a lot more of a mechanic your mana bar like actually matters it's not like wrath where you just get to press you're like in wrath like you kind of had your one heal that was like both the most efficient heal and the most throughput and you just always press that like you'd press holy light or you'd press uh you know chain heal or you'd press rejube or you'd press uh, power word shield and then holy obviously you know holy had like kind of the most dynamic play style in wrath ironically uh that's part of the reason why it was bad just because it didn't have like it's one overpowered button it could just spam um so your mana mana is a lot more and you're actually like skill will affect this tier list a lot like how you minimize overhealing how you target select that kind of stuff anyways that that said soapbox over uh holy paladin holy paladin is like still really good in mana there's different reasons for this now though like it's not just seal of insight which 
is the new seal of wisdom that gives you it still like gives you four percent mana proc on like melee um, and you're gonna pretty much always want to be in melee as holy paladin now not just for mana but because you're crusader strike which you can glyph to be like super super mana cheap will give you holy power and that holy power you can spend to get free healing from light of dawn or word of glory before whereas before like as a holy paladin you just pretty much never had to worry about mana and wrath because even if you were like bad and you didn't know how to weave in your melees i could just even just plea in like wings and just sort of sit there and cast and you wouldn't really uh troll your raid now you you have to actually be good at like generating holy power spending holy power and and getting those melee swings in there and like not playing at the wrong time in order to be mana effective but that being said like if you are good at those things and they're not like super hard to be good at holy paladin is like insanely good for mana so resto druid uh, as i was saying before they have those talents these two talents this is going to be like the core of your mana management strategy along with tree of life so these have like an interesting interaction um, you also have uh revitalize which like every time your hot main hots tick they have a chance to give you one percent mana but this is just passive right this will always be happening you don't really have to like play around this it just happens the thing that you play around is this malfurion's gift empowered touch interaction where you you really don't want to be dropping your life blooms on the tank because not only does it cost three globals to get them back up it also is wasted uh ticks that could be giving you omen of clarity so that's like a little uh it's like it takes some skill to get used to doing that and also your tree of life uh, lets you now uh, cast life bloom on unlimited targets if you play around this well you can spread your life blooms out and because you're going to get multiple life blooms you're going to be getting a lot more clear casting and tree of life also makes your flash heal instant and your flash heal again refreshes the duration of life bloom so you can kind of like spread your life blooms out on everybody uh, you're getting a bunch of clear casting procs and you use those clear casting procs to heal and then refresh the life blooms instantly really get like insane throughput and have like almost no mana issues you also still have innervate you will be using it on yourself pretty much always i can't decide whether or not to put it in ars i feel like i'm gonna put it in a because on average i think the average player is gonna occasionally drop their life bloom stacks and they might not uh play around tree of life perfectly in which case like you're gonna be might be struggling a tiny bit with low gear levels but all things considered it's like it's very strong discipline priest um discipline priest is like super it's one of the most highly changed specs in terms of its play pattern you don't really get that many new spells as discipline but the your your power word shield is like so significantly nerfed that uh you you're not like before in wrath it's pretty much always the correct decision to push power word shield so like well you do have to think about like who do i palm when do i ps you know do i weave in a penance on the tank like although those decisions are like very marginal like if you literally just just only like replace a player with a bot that just pressed power word shield on cd you'd be like 95 percent effective in cataclysm you're making the same decisions but like your power word shield is just way less good so the decisions actually matter also, uh, the biggest change to mana is Rapture. Rapture no longer stacks. So before, on pretty much all the hard fights in Wrath, you could game this where, like, you'd pop a shield so that you'd, your Rapture was on CD, and then you'd have your Rapture come off CD right before a big damage event. That damage event would pop, like, 10 shields, and you'd just get your whole mana bar back, so you had infinite mana. Cataclysm, you can't do that. So what you want to do with Rapture instead is just min-max getting this to proc every 12 seconds. So you're going to be like tracking this and every 12 seconds you're going to want to have a shield on a target that's going to take a bunch of damage so usually that's like one of the two tanks or somebody with a debuff or something like that the other mana tools you get are inner focus is like more of a rotational ability now it has a 45 second cooldown rather than a three minute i think it was so you're going to be like using this mostly on cooldown you can even like macro into prayer or feeling and greater heal if you want if you don't want to think about it uh, it also does not affect him anymore, but your him mana cost is like dramatically reduced. It only costs like a few hundred more mana than a greater heal now. Uh, so that's not like a huge mana nerf to us. The other thing is atonement. Atonement is sort of an interesting thing to talk about. I'll I'll just do a little bit of a atonement uh, spiel here, just because we're we're already looking at it. Atonement is like a lot of people talk about atonement priest in kata it's a bit of a misnomer it's not like retail where this like dominates the whole spec and your whole spec becomes structured around converting the damage you do into healing 
on some bosses where there's damage amp, you are just going to be purely healing with atonement, but most of the time you're just going to be using this to generate evangelism and uh, archangel stacks. So evangelism just gives you it stacks up to five times. It just procs up every spell that does damage with atonement. And then you convert these with archangel, which is a 30 second CD into 5% mana and 18% uh, healing for 20 seconds. All things considered though, I think discipline is like a roundup with there with the uh, restoration druid. If you manage your rapture and you you use your atonement in places where it's a, it's because atonement's like super mana efficient. So if you use that when it's good, and then you also just know how to weave in your like prayers of healing and your single target heals correctly, you're not gonna have any mana issues. Um, Holy priest is like a is a different story. This is part of the reason why I think it has a little bit of a a stigma attached to it. Your only real like mana talent you get is holy concentration, which increases your mana regen from spirit. Yeah, so spirit spirit becomes super valuable for you as a stat, but there's no like uh there's no like active thing you do that that uh, generates mana. Uh, so you you're really just relying on like correct spell targeting, spell choices, like you know not overhealing, picking your prayer of healing group targets really well. So it, it it's 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 if you're, if you're bad at holy priest, it can be pretty bad in terms of mana, but it's also rewarding in that if you're really good at the spec, you can like impress people and because it does have the potential for high throughput. Resto Shaman, I think, is it's a, probably better than Holy Priest in this respect, but it is still in the B tier. Your main, uh, you have some like passive reduction, but your main mana tool is going to be Resurgence and like your Water Shield, right? So Resurgence, just whenever you crit, you get like a certain amount back relative to a, what, what heal you cast. If you're in that stacked raid healing scenario where you're like super blasting, getting full bounces out of your chain heal, you can get like really, really mana efficient. But if you're in any other scenario where like maybe you're not getting full effectiveness from your chain heals, maybe you're not like getting water shield procs from some ticking damage or you really, you can go um a little bit. You you do have your mana, mana tide and it does scale with spirit. So, but it, it's like a, it's a bit nerfed. It's not like the hugest thing anymore. The only other thing you do is you have like a little bit of a, an atonement style with Teleric Currents. Teleric Currents just grants mana back based on your lightning bolt damage. So... On some fights where you need like 0.5 of a healer, you can do like a play pattern where you're basically lightning bolting the boss, keeping healing rain down, and like chucking out the occasional chain heal and like earth shield, and you can do really good healing. So yeah, I put it in, in the in the B tier with holy. I think on most fights it's gonna be like holy paladin on average is gonna have really high throughput. I think dis priest is gonna have decently high throughput on average. I think that um, the Resto Shaman is going to be like insane on the fights where it's good and pretty bad in the fights where it's not. I think Holy Priest is going to surprise people and be really like, kind of blasting, especially if the fights are like short and there's a lot of raid damage. Uh, Resto Druid, I think, is going to be where it's good, it's going to be good. And on the fights where it's not as good, it's going to be better than Resto Shaman is on the bad fights um, that it has. So I think it's like there. If your Dis Priest is good, you can, you, it's not the same where you can just raid, you can just blanket the whole raid in Power Word Shield. Power Word Shield only has a 15 second duration now, so even if you're haste GCD capped, you can only sh shield 15 people. And your window for like making those shields effective is shorter, right? Because it's 50% less duration. So you can't snipe as much healing as Discipline, but you can blanket the raid with POH. You can, you can steal a lot of raid healing if you're good as a Discipline Priest, so like, that said, if you have a good discipline priest in your group, they're going to be like stealing a lot of the healing. And again, like all the all, all the specs can do everything decently, so like the difference here is not that much. Um, all right, so let's talk about utility next. Given that every healer is decently flexible, every healer can do ten man, every healer can do twenty five, every healer can uh, raid, heal, tank, heal, etc. The difference between the healers becomes a lot more like utility loaded, right? Utility differentiates. In Cataclysm, the buffs get homogenized a lot, so like more classes than Paladin bring Kings and all that. You know, your Mage brings Heroism, there's like not as much unique utility. So the unique utility that does exist becomes more important, especially utility that's like stackable. So utility here is, this is going to be like one of the most important rankings. And it's going to be a reason why you bring specific healers. Holy Paladin, being Paladin, has access to the whole like Paladin suite of utility with all the hands, right? You get Bop, you get you get uh, Freedom, you get uh, Blessing of Sacrifice, right? Which is like a, a really nice tank external. 
Uh, and also with, uh, you're decently tanky, right? You have like your wall and, and you have your immunity. And you also have this, which protector of the innocent. So you have like kind of a free beacon on yourself. And this heals for a lot. So if you sack someone, you're you're way less likely to die in Kata than you were in Wrath. You also have like Hodge, which is a low CD stun. You have Holy Wrath. You have all your auras. You have Aura Mastery is now, where is it? Um, aura Mastery is now spec specific. So you're the only one that can bring this. And it's it's really good with Resistance Aura, but you can also use it with Devo for like a little bit of a tank CD. You're, again, like I said, you're super tanky. You're probably the tankiest healer, which is like part of utility, right? If you're dead, you can't be useful. Uh, you have wall, you have an immunity, you have that protector of the innocent, which is like really a lot of self-healing. So yeah, so Holy Paladin is like a pretty strong pick. If you don't have at least one Holy Paladin, you're you're probably doing something wrong if you're like really min-maxing. And they're, they're going to be one of the last healers you, you would drop. The other thing is they have low off-spec potential, right? Because Rhett shares no gear with Holy. Uh, let's go to our druid next. Our druid is uh, brings battle res, but the problem with battle res is that other classes have it now, and it's also capped. So you can't just have like bring unlimited druids and just get infinite battle reses anymore. So that's like not the not the hugest utility uh, bonus anymore. Um, you bring fairy fire, which is actually nice because if you don't have like a feral in your raid, you're actually going to be like a decent choice to just use three globals putting fairy fire up at the beginning of the fight you also have um stampeding roar stampeding roar is like actually kind of a huge one it's like a raid wide sprint and it's like stackable right the more every extra druid is just an extra roar you are decently tanky you have low cooldown bark skin right which is a decent little personal you're probably the second tankiest you don't have a kick uh, that's something I forgot to mention about Holy Paladin. You have Rebuke now, which is a which is like a melee CD kick, and you're going to be in melee anyway, so you you get a lot of utility. You can like save a pull by hitting a missed kick. It's also really good in like five mans and ten man. Maybe in ten man you don't have like a lot of classes with short CD kick. Your Holy Paladin can fill that role. Rust Odor does not have easy access to a kick there. It does have like Bash, but again that's worse than Hodge, right? Because you have to shift your forms. Um, you do have like clone hibernate roots, but those are pretty limited in raid, right? Not not the most useful. But again, just because of roar, I'd put it like maybe like bottom of A, top of B. Let's talk about Arsham next. Arsham has access to totems, which now totems just kind of become like a way to fill in the gaps in your raid buffs. They're not like that much unique stuff you get from totems, but like in ten man, that's going to be decently valuable. Although you're you're probably going to have an Ellie Shaman in your ten man because Ellie Shaman brings the ten percent spell power buff, and it's like really nice you know you're either going to have a demo or an ellie in a 10 man so you have your you know obviously you have your basic um shaman stuff you have heroism although that's shared with mage now so not like as useful uh you have purge you have tremor you have grounding you have a uh, short kick that's ranged which is nice uh, you have hex and bind elemental but those are again very marginal right more like five man stuff uh you're not tanky really you have like a little bit of tankiness that comes from your tree like, you have this, which is actually good. Reduces damage taken while casting. You're pretty much always going to be casting. Especially given that you get Spirit Walker's Grace, where you can cast while moving now. So, like, most of the time, this is going to be up. It's not going to be that tanky. You don't really have much defensiveness. The only thing for defensiveness that you really have is there's a Glyph... Yeah, a Glyph of Healing Wave, which your Healing Wave heals you for 20%, so it becomes, like, a mini binding heal. You can grab this and do something with it. And you also can get Stoneclaw Totem is just like a super efficient self feel but again this is like very marginal you're probably not going to be pressing this most of the time in in a raiding environment it's a it's a good source of the ancestral healing inspiration 10 percent dr buff on the tank but like you're you're always going to have a dis priest in your raid if you're min maxing so they can put that up uh the last thing that i'll talk about which is like i saved it for last because it is the best best for last uh spirit link totem this is a three minute cd and it lasts six seconds so what this does is it basically just makes every player in the raid immune to death for six seconds. It gives that 10% DR, which is like not the, it's not the most important part of the spell by any means, but it is nice. Um, and the other hidden benefit of this is that by rebalancing the whole raid's health, it dramatically increases the efficiency of any raid heal that is going to heal a lot of targets for a small amount. Instead, if instead of like five people being at 5% and everybody else being at 100 you have everybody at 90%, now your healing rain is 100% effective on every target it hits. So it's sort of like a secret healing cooldown. W with Spirit Link, it's S tier conditionally. Similar to the like raid healing stuff, when Shaman is good, it's insane. And then when it's not good, it's like mid. 
in the fights where your spirit link is like really good it's s tier and then in the fights where spirit link doesn't doesn't really do much it's like kind of mid hard time giving it a rating i'd put it like it's like near resto druid uh it's better in 10 man too as well where like those totems are going to be more useful in the heroism like you might not have a mage next let's do discipline so has the typical priest utility of your double hymns right you get mana him you get healing him uh, it has md fear ward purge right it has new it has life grip although uh, i hesitate to actually add life grip into the utility section here because i imagine that like out of a thousand times life grip is actually cast in a raid it's 999 times gonna be to troll somebody and that one time is gonna be like your uh your epic twitch clip compilation thing where like somebody pulls somebody who falls off the edge or whatever but like really that's super super marginal so life grip i, I it's just kind of a funny uh, our role-playing ability that you can use to kill people uh it gets pi although pi is now um it's now two minutes instead of what, what was it before 1.25 um it has pain suppression which is like pretty strong the big thing in terms of utility that discipline gets that's new in wrath of the lich king is powered barrier this is like very strong it's kind of like the new dsac right uh it's a three minute CD and it basically puts like a little ring on the ground. I think it's the same radius as like healing rain and a lot of the AOE healing effects. Um, it lasts for 10 seconds and it just gives 25% DR to anybody in the uh, in the radius. So you can use this as like a big raid CD. You can use it on the tank. You can use it on the melee stack. Like there's a lot of different ways to use this. Um, it's very, very strong. So uh, this is like, this is, it's not quite spirit link level, but it is very, very, very good. So I put that in, I put discipline, all things considered, uh, in an S tier, uh, with with paladin. Um, in terms of tankiness, it's it's a bit squishy, right? You have no no defensives, and you lose the uh, in wrath. You could get like that eight. You usually get eight percent, uh, but you could fully max out with ten percent, like magic dr in your holy tree. You lose that. It's on um, here. It's on this talent, which is like. Uh, spell damage taken reduced by six percent well within inner fire but you can't really afford to grab this so you just kind of lose that passive dr you also don't really want to take desperate prayer and it's not the greatest anyway so you you just are you're pretty squishy like you don't take any of your passive tankiness talents really uh so you're probably one of the squishier healers um but yeah all things considered your s tier like you're just this priest is kind of insane they're also a bit more stackable which makes it so like if you did, if you really want like a bunch of barriers you can take multiple disc priests because weakened soul um, isn't as big of a deal anymore. Um, holy priest. So again, holy priest it's the same class as disc, right? So it has all that like MD fear ward uh, purge all that stuff. It has GS right, but GS your glyph for GS um, it just reduces the cooldown by thirty seconds. So. Uh, before in wrath like if it didn't proc it would only have a one minute cd this version it's just two minutes 30 and it's the same where it's like 60 percent healing and it also has a little cheat death it has ghost form as well which you can kind of cheese for mana but the problem is like because battle reses are capped now the cost of like having to be res the healer after their ghost form like this is really you're not really going to use that anymore you also have your light well but like <laughs> i mean it's a light well right uh it's it's actually really strong like if you get good use out of all the all the charges it's like a pretty strong cooldown it's very efficient but like i mean getting people to click your light well you're you're insane you're out to lunch if you think people are going to do that uh the only you can pretty much count on the only one using your light well being you uh and maybe if you have like a simp in the raid or something they might click it uh, but even if it's just you if you just like sit, sit it put it down where you're going to be and you just click it because it does last for three minutes like you can get decent throughput out of this so but that's like not it's not really a utility because you know nobody clicks it um but yeah i pretty much i, I put it in b i think it's solidly less the other healers in terms of utility i think this is a big reason why it's not really it's like has that stigma right because discipline is like co comparable with it on other aspects has better mana and its utility is just so much better and it's the same class all these, all the other non-Holy Paladin healers have high off-spec potential, but I think the best off-spec are going to be your Ellie Shaman. Our Sham is so, like, situational in terms of how good it is, and Ellie Shaman is really good and stackable. And then Balance Druid as well. So, although you're, you're, you can't have, like, as your flex healer, you could have a Holy Priest who goes a shadow and not be embarrassed by that at all. Um, so that's Utility.
So let's talk about fun. So we're going to go into my 100% objective and unbiased uh, take on the ratings of how fun each one is. Um, I'm going to start with HPAL. I think HPAL is like kind of a 7 out of 10 A a here i think it's um has a cool play style it gets a lot better than wrath it's not just like a one button class plus some utility spells you cast every once in a while holy power is kind of fun to play around uh you're going to be casting you know a bunch of different spells your 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 free heals feels you know it feels good to just cast free heals like wog and, and sprinkler are nice the downsides though are that you still have to be in melee and the relying on insight procs to get mana back is like kind of annoying weaving in crusader strike maybe you like that play style maybe you don't but it can be a bit annoying um also your your sprinkler holy power spender uh not only does it look absolutely absurd it's also like a conal so it can be kind of annoying if people are like not not stacked or you're in a you're in a bad position you can usually get this like on the melee right but but yeah, I'd, I'd give it a 7 out of 10 overall. Uh, Resto Druid, let's do Resto Druid next. Uh, Resto Druid, I'd give it an 8. I think it's better than Holy Paladin. Uh, blanketing Hots is always fun. Uh, just like Reju, getting your Rejuve and your Wild Growth and just like blasting the whole raid and being up, up on top of the meters on those raid damage fights is like fun. I think Tree of Life is really cool like as a CD in terms of its mechanical usage. But uh, it's a huge like flavor loss, RP loss. The 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 uh, the broccoli tree is just like so absurdly ugly, and I I mean there's a reason why people were like just incensed mad over it when Cata launched, and it is kind of mind blowing to me that 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 broccoli tree is still in the game. Um, although I think you can glyph it to like get the old tree back, but also like just losing your permanent little tree form is just kind of a flavor loss. Uh, but in terms of play style, it's like really fun. Um, also, there's like there's a decent skill cap in Resto Druid where using your tree form right and like maximizing your like life bloom and your clear casting and stuff is like decently difficult and fun to master. Um, the downsides is that like dropping that life bloom can be pretty annoying because you have to like putting back three stacks on the tank is just like kind of annoying and takes a long time. So feels bad there. Uh, I'm gonna do Arsham next. I think Arsham is like kind of like a six honestly i think i in my opinion it's the least fun and the reason why is like on the fights where you're just blasting and everybody's stacked and you're like you know your healing rain's just like your healing rain and your chain heals are going off like you it's a 10 it's like awesome you feel like you're carrying the raid and then like every other situation you kind of feel like like you're just kind of lagging a little bit which is not fun it's also uh an upside that like it's so easy to just swap to ellie um so on the fights where it's like good and fun you just play resto and then the fights where it's bad you just play ellie so hopefully you like ellie if you do like ellie then it's like s tier fun but otherwise i think it's b um discipline uh i'm a little bit biased i i, I love discipline i think discipline's like a nine out of ten uh it's there's always something to do there's like multiple angles of healing with atonement um there's like multiple angles of your mana management there's uh your you know there's always ways you can improve there's ways you can tailor your play style to different fights i think it's one of the best iterations of discipline world of warcraft i think they kind of went a little bit too hard into like atonement in the later expansions and i think in the previous expansions you know discipline was like either not it was like a meme spec or in wrath it's just one button so i i, I honestly think kata is like this disc design uh holy priest i think holy priest is like a seven probably less fun than resto druid and about the same as holy paladin in my opinion uh it's why i think it's fun to be like an underdog a little bit and and try to like surprise people right that's always fun it's also like a decently difficult play style to master but simple to learn um because again as i was saying before you don't really have like active mana regen um you really have to be like good at selecting who you target with your uh renews and who you target with your prayer of healings and all that stuff to be good at holy priest so that's fun to it's like fun to min max um you're you're because of because you're relying on prayer of healing though and this goes for disc as well you are kind of reliant on your raid leader like doing good groups although you can just ask your raid leader and probably do that yourself so that's the that's the fun tier list again completely objective and you'll notice that all the healers are like above a five and fun i think 
I think Cataclysm is like, again, peak healer expansion. If you like healing, you should definitely be playing Cataclysm. There's a lot of like dooming and like a lot of people like, you know, they they just wanted to get to Arthas and kill a chicken and they, they think that cata they think that like the classic is over. Cataclysm is really just is just really just Wrath plus. If you like Wrath rating, you will like Cataclysm. I encourage you to try it out, especially if you like if you like healing. Even if you've never healed before, you might be like a little bit uh you might be a little bit intimidated by it, how I'm talking about like skill cap and, and like mana management and all that stuff. It's really fun and you'll you'll pick it up quick if you've never healed before. It's not a bad time to start. Um, but yeah, that's my that's my rating. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I, I'll probably be coming out with a discipline priest guide at the very least, and I might do uh, some of the other healers. So keep keep an eye out for that.